So, what you do with specific tactics, I kind of gave you the introduction and the neurobiological basis of, but the clinical strategy is to really not, not treat the disorder. What? I sometimes joke with my residents. I said, I've never treated major depressive disorder in my life. I don't treat schizophrenia either. What, Dr. Stahl? I treat delusions, I treat hallucinations, I treat sadness, I treat insomnia. And so the question is, what symptoms does this specific patient have? And if they have psychomotor fatigue, for example, this points to something wrong with the circuit that impinges on the motor striatum. If they have problems with interest, this might be the ventral striatum. If they can't concentrate, it's the prefrontal cortex, on and on and on. You can deconstruct the nine symptoms of depression into specific, hypothesized, screwed up brain circuits. And if you have an inefficient information processing in one part of the brain, you're gonna to try to restore that to efficiency in order to remove symptoms. Same's true in mania. You've got motor agitation in the striatum, racing thoughts in the ventral striatum, and the prefrontal cortex, distractibility, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea is to take the specific symptoms of that patient at that time and say, okay, let's map each symptom to a hypothetically malfunctioning brain circuit, and let's treat each symptom until we're better. Now, the chances are you choose, you know, first-line treatment. You're not going to get all symptoms better in all patients with one drug. So what are you going to do instead? You're going to remember that dopamine can innervate these brain areas. Noradrenaline or norepinephrine can innervate these areas, and serotonin can. So until we have better drugs for glutamate and GABA, at the very least what we can do is play on these three monoamine keyboards. One simple way of doing this is to say it looks like if you have reduction of what's called positive affect, you lose your mood, you lose your happiness, your interest, your joy, your alertness, your self-confidence. That means boost norepinephrine and or dopamine. Over here, if you're disgusted, anxious, hostile, irritable, lonely, that signals a problem with serotonin. That's why maybe SSRIs work on the right and other drugs that boost dopamine or epinephrine on the left. That's oversimplified and not always true, but it's a concept underlying the beginning of trying to say, let's try to tailor our treatment to the specific symptoms of a specific patient. A little more modern and neurobiologically based and still hypothetical is a symptom-based algorithm. What am I talking about? Let's take a patient. We treat them with depression. What are the most common residual symptoms of our current treatments? Usually SSRI, serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. There are problems with sleep, usually insomnia, problems with concentrating and fatigue. These are left over once you treat depression in many cases. So what are you gonna do about that? Well, I've now deconstructed this patient's symptoms, not just on the first visit, but after treatment, when they're still not completely well, I'm saying, well, where is the problem with fatigue? Oh, that could be the striatum. What about um, lack of interest in, in problems with energy? That's probably maybe the nucleus accumbens and the Prefrontal cortex means you can't concentrate and loss of interest, and there's a such thing as mental fatigue. And of course, insomnia has nothing to do with the cortex, probably. It's probably in the hypothalamus where all the, the regulators of sleep are. So if this is what's wrong with this patient, I need to target these brain areas. Now, I may be already on some drug, and we can keep that going, but we may need to augment that with something else to target these remaining symptoms. And so I'm sure you've done this yourself many times. Think about it. So I've thought of the remaining symptoms, I've then, after, after deconstructing all the symptoms into a list, laundry list of all the symptoms a patient still has, then I've matched them to hypothetically malfunctioning circuits. Now I'm gonna target the neurotransmitters that regulate them. Now here's a good example. If you have insomnia after treatment of depression, you wanna boost GABA or block serotonin or histamine. 
But if you have fatigue, that's the last thing you want to do. If you're going to boost GABA block, or like with a, with a benzo or with a, a Z drug hypnotic, or you want to block serotonin or histamine, that's going to make your fatigue worse. That's why you have to target sleep with a different strategy than concentration and, and sleep. So, so concentration and fatigue tend to be improved by boosting dopamine and nor norepinephrine, whereas sleep problems by boosting GABA or blocking serotonin. Those are just examples. Now, same thing, if a person's got problems with sleep, what do you want to do? Give them an activator of a concentration? That's going to make their sleep worse. So this is why you would specifically match the potential neurotransmitters that regulate that symptom in that patient at that time. That's your customizing. That's your, if you bespoke psychopharmacology, you're, you're basically tailoring something to that specific patient because of their unmet needs for the specific symptoms they have left over.